Hi, this is Jared. Rainbow Six Siege launched a couple of years back and it remains an extremely popular online tactical shooter. If you're hoping to become more competitive, hitting 144 frames per second on a high refresh rate monitor can definitely help, and that's what many pros aim for. I've put together a suite of test results on all of the latest graphics cards, along with several previous generation parts and three gaming notebooks. Many competitive gamers will drop to lower quality settings in order to boost frame rates, and it's also important to point out that by default, Rainbow Six Siege uses render scaling combined with Temporal AA. This is 50% unless you change the setting, meaning 1920 by 1080 actually renders at 1360 by 764 and then scales that up to 1080p. This of course introduces some blurriness and other artifacts, and if you want optimal visibility, you'll want to render with 100% scaling. That's what I've done for these tests, so if you're wondering why the performance figures are lower than other places report, that's the main difference. I'm also testing with the latest version of the game as of late February 2018, using the current NVIDIA 390.77 and AMD 18.2.2 drivers. The game includes a built-in benchmark which I've used for this performance analysis. Different maps and areas can alter the frame rate, but in general performance scales similarly, so the ranking of GPUs should remain the same. In these tests, I focused on 1080p medium as the baseline, with ultra quality used at higher resolutions. As a quick point of reference, if you drop to low quality, you can improve performance over medium quality by about 25%. Medium quality, meanwhile, is about 50% faster than ultra quality, so you can nearly double the performance I'm showing at 1440p and 4K ultra by dropping to minimum quality, and even more if you start playing with the render scaling. For a full exploration of the settings and how each impacts performance, check out the full article on PCGamer.com. I'm going to start with results at 720p at minimum quality, without any anti-aliasing. These are running on AMD's Ryzen 5 2400G with Vega 11 integrated graphics, as well as Intel's i7-8700K with HD Graphics 630. As expected, AMD's Vega 11 is substantially faster, delivering about 2.5 times the performance. The Ryzen 2200G with Vega 8 graphics is about 15% slower than the 2400G, and using DDR4 2400 RAM also drops performance about 15-20%, to but in either case, AMD's Ryzen APUs are easily able to beat Intel's HD 630, and they can hit 60 frames per second or more in Rainbow Six Siege at 720p. Shifting to 1080p medium quality, the AMD RX 560 has a slight lead over the GTX 1050, while the RX 570 4GB shows a more significant advantage over the GTX 1060 3GB. All of the cards manage at least 60 frames per second, and lowering the settings a notch can push the 570 and 1060 into 144 frames per second territory. That's basically the minimum level of GPU you'll need to max out a 144Hz display. Looking at the full set of results, Rainbow Six Siege can scale to surprisingly high frame rates. Even the Titan V doesn't seem to be hitting CPU bottlenecks. If you're running one of the rare 240Hz displays, you'd need to drop quality to 1080p low to max it out, and you'd still need at least a GTX 1080. But for 1080p 144Hz displays, the mainstream 1060 and above should do the trick. Now if only the cryptocurrency miners would stop buying all the cards. From a competitive perspective, there's not much advantage to going above medium quality or even low quality, but what sort of hardware would you need to max out Rainbow Six Siege with its ultra preset and 100% render scaling? The GTX 1060 and RX 580 easily break 60 FPS, while the Vega 56 and 1070 are running at more than 100 FPS. As before, AMD GPUs are generally faster than their similarly priced competitors, particularly in some of the more complex scenes. The 1080p medium results are mostly around 50% faster than 1080p Ultra, though cards with less than 4GB VRAM like the GTX 1050 or older cards like a GTX 770 can show larger gains. For 60 frames per second, you can still max out image quality even on an RX 570, which this time comes up just short of the 1063GB. 144Hz displays would require either lower quality settings or going all in with a GTX 1080 Ti. Most people playing Rainbow Six Siege won't want to go beyond 1440p, and even then, running at lower quality settings in order to hit higher refresh rates would be advisable. The AMD and Nvidia cards continue to trade blows, with AMD coming out ahead for cards that are nominally the same price. Not that we've ever seen Vega 56 selling for $400, except for the first few hours after it launched. Short of reducing the settings, the only current graphics card to break 144 frames per second at 1440p Ultra is the Titan V. That's something to aspire toward with your next major tournament win, though I can think of far better ways to spend $3,000. If you're merely gunning for 60 frames per second, the GTX 1070 and above will do. 
Or you can go with the faux 1440p option and use 50% render scaling, which improves performance of the tested GPUs by about 80% in most cases, at the cost of overall image quality. Obviously, running at 4K and maxed out quality is even more demanding than 1440p, and performance drops by half or more with all the graphics cards. The GTX 1080 also manages to squeak past the Vega 64 this round, though both fall well short of 60 frames per second. Initially, I had used the default settings with 50% render scaling for many of my test results, which again boosts performance by around 80%. The GTX 1080 Ti, for example, scored 95 frames per second, but the engine is only rendering at 2716 by 1528 and then upscaling that to 3840 by 2160. The GTX 1080 Ti comes awfully close to averaging 60 frames per second, though minimums dip well below that mark. As with many games, there's not a huge loss of image quality running at the very high or even high preset, however, and you can boost frame rates by 10% at very high and 25% at high if needed. On the CPU side of things, I've done testing with 4-core and 6-core Intel 8th Gen Coffee Lake CPUs and 4-core to 8-core AMD Ryzen processors. All the processors are using the same MSI GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X graphics card, with the intent of maximizing the difference between the CPUs. The Intel chips do improve performance by a small amount, mostly at lower resolutions and settings, and increasing the resolution or dropping down to just about any other GPU would narrow the gap. The quad-core parts do show more variability in frame rates, but know that even 4-core, four 4-thread four processors come very close to maxing out the GTX 1080 Ti, and at lower quality settings, all of the CPUs can easily break 144 frames per second. Somewhat interesting to note is that the i7-8700K is overclocked to 4.8 GHz, yet despite that massive advantage in clock speed plus the extra threads, it's no faster than the i5-8400. AMD's Ryzen processors show a bit more variation in minimum frame rates, but there's basically no difference in average FPS. On the notebook side of the fence, things are much as expected. The notebook GPUs are slightly slower than their desktop counterparts due to reduced clock speeds and lower power use, but it's only about a 12% drop in performance at most. There's less competition in the notebook market as well with most gaming laptops utilizing Nvidia GPUs, and the result is clear steps in performance at each price level. Worth pointing out is that the GT73 VR does have the option for a 120Hz 1080p G-Sync display, which is a great match for the GTX 1080 if you're after liquid smooth frame rates. Testing at higher resolutions with most of the notebooks wasn't possible. Nvidia's DSR doesn't seem to like Rainbow Six Siege, at least with the latest drivers. I could simulate higher resolutions using TAA 2X or TAA 4X, but it's not quite the same as rendering at a higher resolution. It can be useful for further reducing jaggies, however, if that's what you're after. As always, thanks to MSI, who partnered with PC Gamer for these performance analysis articles and provided all of the primary hardware used in testing. I'm running MSI's Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard for my main test system, and supplementing that with AMD Ryzen CPU results on the X370 Gaming Pro Carbon. Both systems use 16GB of DDR4-3200 CL14 memory. The graphics cards are MSI's factory overclocked Gaming X series, except for the RX 560 Aero and the reference RX Vega cards. I've moderately overclocked these as well to mimic the Gaming X line. At lower quality settings, Rainbow Six Siege isn't particularly demanding. It's easy enough to get more than 60 frames per second on even a modest gaming PC. What's a bit surprising is how much the combination of 100% render scaling and higher quality settings drops performance, even though the game is more than two years old. The Anvil Next 2.0 engine can definitely push your hardware if you're gunning for maximum quality, though most professional gamers will be more interested in hitting higher frame rates. One of the great things about Rainbow Six Siege is that Ubisoft has kept the game fresh with regular content updates, and the tactical gameplay is a different experience from other popular multiplayer shooters. And if you're hoping to rise to the top of the leaderboards, having the right hardware can certainly help. I hope you've enjoyed this performance analysis of Rainbow Six Siege and found it useful. As always, thanks for watching.